Does this Sidewinder X1 have what it takes to challenge the Creality CR10? Well, today we're gonna to find out as I put it through its paces. The Creality CR10 has been the most popular large format 3D printer for a few years now. There have been challenges, but most of them have simply been clones. They've had little to offer in the way of innovative features to make them stand out. They've simply been just a little bit cheaper. Well, in my opinion, this one is different. This is the Artillery 3D Sidewinder X1. It has the same large format print volume of 300 by 300 by 400 millimeters, but it's packaged in a neat all-in-one frame. There's a lot of features on this that you'd normally find on a modified printer rather than a standard one, such as the pancake stepper motor running a clone Titan Gear direct drive extruder and a Volcano hot end. It has a silicon glass bed heated by AC mains power and its main board is an MKS Gen L with a TFT 28 touchscreen. It offers some handy features that are becoming more and more standard on 3D printers these days, such as filament runout detection and power loss recovery. But those are the normal features. Let me take you through some of the things that are perhaps unique. Firstly, the cable management is superb. Instead of loose cables everywhere, it uses these ribbon cable connectors and they fold back on themselves like cable chains do on CNC machines. In my opinion, this is super neat. As I've seen on Thingiverse before, we have a roller bearing filament mount system and that has adjustable width for all different filament spool sizes. On the back of the machine, we have dual Z-axis stepper drivers, but not only that, they're connected via the top via pulley to keep them synchronized. While we're looking at the frame, check out just how thick these extrusions are. It stands to reason that on a V-roll system, the wider the extrusion, the more stable it should be. This thing is built like a tank. Another thing it has is contactless end stops, and you'll also find a G-code controlled RGB LED next to the hot end. Now, interestingly, while I've been reviewing this, I've also concurrently been reviewing the Creality CR10S Pro, and you can expect to see that review in the near future. This one here seems to go for around 500 US dollars, and that's 150 US dollars cheaper than the official price for the Creality CR10S Pro. So it's got it beaten on price, but really we want to compare the features as well as the performance, and we'll do that by starting with the unboxing and assembly. Along with the main printer components, there are tools and a bunch of spares. The main instructions are not too bad, a little bit vague in places, and there's also a separate manual for setting up your slicing software. Took me about 15 minutes to get the printer together. In reality, there's only four bolts, but I had a couple of issues. I dropped a T-nut inside the frame and had to disassemble it to retrieve, and I also found the ribbon cable attachment a little bit fiddly. Nevertheless, overall, this printer is still easy to put together. You should have it up and running in 10 to 15 minutes. A couple of tips for you, make sure that the ribbon cable is folded clear of the bed, otherwise you're gonna damage it really quickly. And the other thing to watch out for is the Z end stop switch. You should manually wind the Z axis down until the nozzle touches the bed, and then move the end stop up to meet the metal extrusion before you tighten it and proceed to level the bed. This will ensure it homes safely without any collisions. Bed leveling is a manual process, although there is a menu on the LCD to assist you in moving the print head around. I use my standard method of a piece of paper. The wheels are a little bit hard to reach, but they do feel pretty stiff, so I don't expect to need to level very often. All up, we're ready to print in under half an hour. On to my experiences with a range of test prints, and I started with the G-code on the SD card, and that is this here. This is a little cube with the Artillery 3D logo on the top. Now, the first one of these I printed didn't turn out too well, and that's because I noticed immediately afterwards that the X belt is quite loose. There's actually a small assembly error here, which makes the belt lose tension. Fortunately, it's an easy fix. After taking two minutes to perform that, I reran the same G-code, and it printed much, much better this time. The recommended slicing software that Artillery 3D have for this is Slicer, but I use Simplify 3D. I noticed during that test print that this printer moves around very, very fast, even when homing and doing free movement and things like that. I examined the G-code of the test cube and I used that to pull out the data I needed to build a simplified 3D profile. This thing was set up to print fast. It had a default speed of 100 millimeters per second with travel moves all the way up to 250 millimeters per second. I applied these speeds and settings to this low poly Pikachu. Considering the print speed, I found this one came out quite well. I decided to run the same print again and test the filament runout detection. Midway through the print, I let the gold run out and then I switched it to blue. But the trouble is with glass beds like this, if the print starts to cool down, it can lose a bit of adhesion and that's what happened here. It came loose and it ruined the print. 
Next up, I loaded up some fresh gold X3D PLA and I printed a 3D Benchy. And this one does suffer from the excessive speed. You can see the problem at the front of the boat in the overhang. And I think it's a combination of fast print speed and inadequate part cooling because there's not enough time for things to cool down and we have some distortion. Beyond that problem and some mild stringing, this thing looks fairly decent. Now, all of this was around the time that I was remixing the Hero Me base for my Ender 3 direct drive conversion. So I tried to test print one of the iterations of that design on this printer. And again, the high speed and inadequate part cooling caused some defects. You can see in this really small section on the left that the plastic just hasn't been deposited properly and it's ruined the final result. At this point, I realized I was probably ruining the potential of the printer by focusing so much on printing fast. Therefore, I slowed the print speed down from 100 millimeters per second to a much more modest 60 millimeters per second. That's when I started to have some more success. I printed out a set of my Patreon Maker coins and the quality on those was definitely sufficient. Partway through that very long print, I had an actual power outage in my street and that gave me an opportunity to test the power loss recovery. Unfortunately, like with the filament change, the glass bed cooled down enough that some of the parts lost adhesion and a bunch of them ended up coming loose and failing. Now around this time, I had some other failures such as all of these Maker coins here and that was down not to the printer, but to trying to use some old dodgy filament. The filament had become soft and the extruder gripped tight enough that occasionally it would grind through and the printer would jam. As soon as I switched back to my x 3 d filament, however, the problems went away. I wonder how many people out there 3D printing have a lot of their problems caused by using substandard filament. I also had some failures where test prints peeled off the bed mid-print because they lost adhesion. And yes, glass can be a fantastic surface, but you've got to keep it squeaky clean. I find it much easier to use hairspray like I did in this case, and I didn't have a failed print from that point onwards. My pro tip is to use the ones that look and smell like they're from your grandma's house. I haven't had anywhere near as much success with using these fancy pants ones. My next test print in PLA you can't see because I'm using it right now and it's a microphone adapter that bolts onto my tripod for my camera. This object was quite solid and prone to warping and lifting off the bed but as you can see with the hairspray the glass held it down perfectly. The accuracy and strength from later adhesion has also turned out to be greatly sufficient for what I need and I'm very happy with this object. My final PLA test print was this vase here and although it looks stunning up close it was in fact a failure because this thing was meant to be the full 400 millimeters high. I tried to test the filament runout detection again and it worked until I loaded up the new filament. Unfortunately there's no park position so the new filament extrudes above the object and not only that it didn't resume to the correct position and I had to stop the print. Definitely some more tweaking needed there. Next up, I tried some PETG and I once again printed my Hero Me Remix ready to fit onto my Ender 3 after my previous one cracked. This one printed without a hitch and stuck beautifully to the glass bed yet lifted straight off as soon as the glass bed had cooled down. On a roll, I decided to test some ABS and I printed another battery cage for my electronic go-kart because my larger, higher rated batteries have arrived. Print quality is once again on par and the strength is also really good and as a bonus it didn't lift up or detach from the bed even though this is an open frame machine. Finally we have this cat printed in TPU. My X3D TPU is Shaw Hardness 85A so it's not the softest but it's not the firmest either and this one printed pretty well apart from some stringing. All I did for this print was to up the extruder temperature, turn off the bed and slow down the speed from 60 to 50 millimeters per second. Surface quality is fantastic, but there's a little bit stringing. I think I had the extruder temperature just a little bit too high. That was everything I printed, so it's onto my summary and pros and cons. We'll start with the pros. Firstly, the frame. It's really, really sturdy and it's bulletproof. This thing can handle the high speeds because it's so well put together. And everywhere you look around it, there's great attention to detail. For instance, look at the cable management on the inside of the case here. Anywhere where the wires cross over a potentially sharp extrusion, there's a special coating down to protect them. I also like the fact that this thing is innovative. It's got all of those features that you don't normally see as I covered at the start of the video. The AC powered bed heats up mega fast and just like my TiVo Tornado, you notice this straight away, especially on cold days and printing in higher temperatures. It just removes so much waiting time before you get printing. With its direct drive extruder, this printer had great performance across every filament that I tried. Normally with TPU, I have to slow down the print speed a little bit to stop it from jamming. With this one, I hardly had to do that at all. With the touchscreen, it's pretty easy to use. The assembly was also fairly straightforward, although a little bit fiddlier than some other printers that I've done. And the print quality for the most part was pretty good. It was not bad when I had it printing really fast and it improved a great deal when I slowed down the speeds to match other printers. I think with a little bit of tweaking to my slicer profile, I could get it better even still. 
Now the next pro for me is a big one and that's the firmware. It's running Marlin 1.1.9 and it's a very recent version. And when I tested it, this is the first printer I've ever reviewed besides my Prusa i3 Mark III that has thermal runaway protection enabled. Thank you so much for doing that Artillery 3D. The final thing that stands out to me is the RGB LED. You can change the color if you want, but I noticed at night when it was printing, shining down onto the objects gave some really cool visual effects. So there's a little bit of added novelty there. Now onto the negatives. Firstly, the power loss recovery and the filament run out detection, they proved unreliable for me. So I think there's a little bit more tweaking needed there. As far as I know, they both run through the TFT28. So it might be possible to update the firmware on that and improve the function without doing too much to the rest of the printer. That AC heated bed, although it heats up fast, it doesn't have any type of strain relief at the back. So that's something I'll be addressing by designing and printing a part to bolt on and to stop these wires from going back and forth and potentially breaking on the inside. Now, although the stepper motor drivers are quiet, there is a little bit of fan noise coming from the mainboard cooling fan. I think that would be a fairly simple change to fix that, so I'm not too concerned. But apart from that, the printer is quite quiet. There's no auto bed leveling sensor, although at this price point, you can probably forgive that. And I have to say the part cooling fan is probably not the best type I've ever used. I think a redesign is also warranted there and I'm planning to design one and print out a part that moves the airstream a little bit closer to the object and provides more effective cooling. Now the last one is a little bit left field. Artillery 3D is a fairly new brand. I don't think there's too many of these out in the wild yet. And as such, there won't be much of a community to collaborate, share, make mods, things like that. But if you're a confident 3D printer, that shouldn't hold you back in the slightest. All right, final thoughts. Do I like this printer? Well, yes, I do. I think I need to tweak to get the print quality a little bit higher to where I'd be perfectly happy, but there's so many features to like on this thing. And you can tell from the design and the way it's put together, it's been done so with care and a lot of attention to detail. I suppose the big question is, how does it compare to the CR10S Pro? Because my review for that will also be upcoming. Well, I'll say that one definitely has an edge in print quality, but there's a few little downsides to that where this one is definitely superior. If you can get this one at a good price, I think it's a pretty good investment for the money and there's potential for modification. Or if you want to just leave it stock, it's going to do a pretty good job as is. That's going to wrap it up. If you have any thoughts or questions, put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.